Uh, former President Trump is expected in court in lower Manhattan for a civil fraud trial that begins today. It is day one. New York Attorney General Letitia James says she wants to put Trump out of business in his home state. Last week, the judge ruled in the case that Trump repeatedly committed fraud and misrepresented his own wealth by billions. The former president vehemently denies the claims. Robert Costa is outside the courthouse in Manhattan with more. Bob, good morning. Good morning. Years ago, when I first started covering former President Donald Trump, he claimed to me he was worth billions of dollars. It was a claim he made for many decades to many people. But now those claims are under real scrutiny and face a reckoning here in New York court. And Trump and his children, including Eric, Donald Jr., and Ivanka, they might be called to testify. Campaigning in Iowa on Sunday, former President Donald Trump lashed out at the mounting trials he faces. They go after their opponents with the law enforcement now. They've weaponized our law enforcement. Today, the trial will begin in the civil case brought by New York Attorney General Letitia James last September. She accuses Trump, his sons Donald Jr. and Eric, and the Trump Organization of inflating the value of properties by hundreds of millions of dollars and pumping up Trump's own net worth all while pursuing favorable bank loans. Claiming you have money that you do not have does not amount to the art of the deal. It's the art of the steal. Last week, New York City Judge Arthur N. Gorin ruled Trump and the Trump Organization had committed fraud and revoked the licenses for some of his flagship properties like Trump Tower. James is seeking $250 million in damages and a ban on Trump running any businesses in New York. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. It's a rigged. Everything about this city is rigged. As he pushes to hold on to his front-running position in the Republican presidential race, Trump's attacks have become a refrain, calling this a politically motivated witch hunt by a racist attorney general and a deranged Trump-hating judge. This case is just one of a number of legal troubles the former president faces, including federal indictments stemming from his actions following the 2020 election and alleged mishandling of classified documents. Attorney On CBS's Garland 60 Minutes, Attorney General Merrick Garland said the Justice Department is committed to following the law the in all cases. We have only one rule, and that one rule is so we follow the facts and the law, and we reach the decisions required by the Constitution, and we protect civil liberties. In this case, the judge has allotted three months for this trial, but so far, all of these legal challenges have done little to upend Trump's place in the Republican presidential race, with so many of his rivals wary of taking him on on this front. All right, Bob, I can tell that this is a place to be if you're a member of the media, because I can hear other people doing their live hits as well. Um, what else can we expect from uh, the court today, though? Ruling that he is liable for fraud and overvalued. You, you can expect former President Donald Trump to arrive here in about an hour, and he will be inside the courtroom. For Trump, this is not just legal peril he's facing, it's political peril. It's about his personal profile he's cultivated for years, building a business in New York, and his business is on the line. While he's facing very serious federal charges in different areas related to January 6 and his handling of classified material. This is about the Trump Organization, a family business that goes back to the work of Fred Trump in the 60s and 70s, building real estate in New York. And this has been so central to him his entire life. I remember going to Mid Midtown Manhattan to Trump Tower years ago, and he would just talk and talk about the Trump Organization. And for now, it's all on the line. So we learned last week that a judge concluded, in fact, that Donald Trump and his organization committed fraud. How does what the judge is ruling last week, how does that impact what's going to be happening now? A lot of these legal challenges facing former President Donald Trump can be complicated to follow. There are federal cases, city cases, state cases. This is a civil lawsuit being brought by the New York State Attorney General, Letitia James. And what's intriguing about this and notable is it doesn't have a jury. This is a judge who's running the entire trial. And because the judge is in total control, he or she, he in this case, can make a ruling before the trial actually begins regarding this lawsuit, during it, and after. So we know that, that the former president's going to be here today. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, it's voluntarily. He doesn't actually have to. But is, it a, is there a likelihood that we will see the former president or his children testify? 
out, but I also do want to know that this crowd... Uh, it, it is, is very possible we're going to see him and his children be called to testify. It's, of course, to be determined whether they're actually called and end up on the stand. But the family, Eric... Don Jr., Ivanka, they were so central to the Trump organization for years. And so when this, when you're dealing with a civil lawsuit about a family organization, a family business, it's not that surprising to see the family being called. It's not like they're being called as witnesses from a family about a business. They're part of the business. So there's a court filing that revealed that Trump requested to postpone a deposition related to his lawsuit against his former lawyer, Michael Cohen. It's another lawsuit we don't talk about, I guess, because of his plans to appear in court today. How will this trial impact the former president's myriad of other legal cases? Everything's intertwined politically and legally right now. Trump's the front runner in the Republican presidential race, but at the same time, he's facing all of these legal issues across the board. And it's taking him away from the campaign trail. Now, for most candidates, that would be a real problem. But for Trump, his campaign believes behind the scenes that no one's really catching up to him at this point. But things are fluid in American politics. Just think about a few days here at CBS News. We reported that Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin is being recruited to jump into the 2024 presidential race. A lot of donors who don't like Trump, Republican officials, they're looking for somebody else to maybe come in or maybe someone already in the race to start to catch up, like Nikki Haley, the former ambassador, of former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, among others. So for Trump, it's all about protecting his status, legally, business-wise, politically, and personally. And that's why he's showing up here. It's part of that defense effort. All right, Bob, thank you very much. You're going to have a busy day.